What's up, Jerome's? Uh, take a look at another mock draft today. Uh, this one's from CBS. Our guy, uh, Chris Trapasso, who does great work. Bills Mafia, draft analyst. He's awesome. Uh, we, we needed a break from the Ryan Wilson mock drafts where it just feels like you just pull names out of a hat. I don't know. I, I don't know. And there's a lot of stuff going on in this one. Notably, uh, a new uh, team coming into the Derby for Deshaun Watson. Now, the Carolina Panthers were in on Matthew Stafford, potentially offered the number eight overall pick. Uh, so they're like, you know what? We may as well upgrade while we're in the market anyway. Moving on from here to today. It hurts. It hurts. But Deshaun, uh, they gave up the number eight overall, uh, a future second round pick, a future first round pick, a fourth round pick in that same year, as well as Troy Pride Jr., uh, the really solid uh, cornerback, I believe fourth round pick last year uh, out of Notre Dame. So, yeah, yeah. But they're out of the market. They got their guy, so they're out of the first round. So let's see how things shake out. Uh, first round, well, er, first round number one overall, Trevor Lawrence. I give it, give it six weeks. Give it till free agency, and you'll see some mock drafts that, that take Trevor Lawrence down. Like, here's that attention you ordered. Hell, maybe we should just do it. Nah. Two, Trevor Lawrence, Broadway, Zachy. Let's go. Flip Darnold uh, for some picks somewhere else. And the Jets... They have nice pieces, uh, but they're not quite ready to compete. Where Zach Wilson will take some time. Uh, you do have Makai Becton on the blind side. Denzel Mims is a nice piece as well. Uh, and you can double and triple back uh, throughout this draft to get him some weapons. So, there you go. Three. So, this would be prime trade-down spot if a team was interested uh, in Justin Fields. But if you have to stick and pick, Devontae Smith getting to his BFF all up in this building. A wide receiver one off the board, even though... I really could see a spot where it is Jamar Chase, where it is um, Jalen Waddell uh, going off the board before Devontae Smith. But, I mean, Devontae worked at the Senior Bowl with the staff from the Dolphins. Brian Flores got to see up close and personal what we all knew. Devontae Smith, oh, yeah, he's pretty good, even though he weighs like five pounds. Four, so this one's interesting. Patrick Sertan, the second, first cornerback off the board. Wow, 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 wow. So Atlanta passes on local guy Justin Fields to be the heir apparent to Matt Ryan. Woo, hoofta, hoofta. Now, I, I understand them passing on Penny Sewell, uh, given that they do have McGarry and Matthews, even though I wouldn't pass up on Sewell. I would just get rid of McGarry. Uh, and then uh, you do have Patrick Sertan uh, pairing up with A.J. Terrell, the first-round pick last year out of Clemson. That's a really nice cornerback duo going forward. And wow, 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 wow. Well, like that one. Like it's, even if Sertan has a good career, if Justin Fields pans out on his potential, this will always be second and third guest uh, in Atlanta, you know, sports talk radio circles. Five, so Jamar Chase, wow. They had a chance at Penny Sewell, and they balked. But taking Jamar Chase, uh, Joe Burrows, one of his great targets at LSU 2019 National Championship. Not as good as Justin Jefferson. But, uh, but Jamar Chase being paired up with T. Higgins, that is a really nice duo. Now, if Burrow just has time to throw the ball, eh, eh. Six, so let's get nuts. Justin Fields on board. Now, if the Eagles are going to go BPA, sure. But Howie Roseman, go home, Howie. You're drunk. Uh, so, uh, assumably, or presumably, they traded Carson Wentz somewhere, maybe to the Colts, which would make sense what happens uh, with the Colts a little bit later on um, if they don't give up that first-round pick. Because remember, uh, we'll get into it. But anyways, Wentz is gone. Jalen Hurts is still there. But Justin Fields might just be too much value. And let them compete and duke it out in 2021, and then the loser is traded out of town. I, I, I'm As crazy as that seems... And as other pressing needs uh, that they have, like wide receiver, defensive back, offensive line. Okay, I, I, I could see it. Seven, so this one kind of sucks. But if they are uh, committed to building around Jared Goof, they may as well protect his ass. So Penny Sewell. Now, what do you do? So they just paid Taylor Decker an ass load of money uh, to be their left tackle, and he's decent. Uh, do you move Penny Sewell to right tackle? Do you eventually trade Decker? Do you kick Sewell inside? I don't know. You'll figure it out, right? Uh, you have a generational prospect just fall into your lap at seven, and you're like, oh, okay, what should we do? It, it really is like the Panthers last year when Derek Brown just fell into their laps at seven. Like, oh, I guess we'll take him. Now, eight. So the Texans got uh, a fistful of picks for Deshaun, sending him uh, to the other conference, uh, sending him back to Carolina. Already got a built-in fan base because uh, of his uh, time at Clemson, but no pants or Trey Lance. He deserves better, man. He, he does, but I think that he will play right away. 
Texans are going to be a bad team for a while, uh, but they do have substantial draft capital now, or they're getting back some of their own draft capital uh, that will allow them to build uh, around Trey Lance. They do have Laramie Tunsil in place, so at least uh, he has a solid left tackle, but I don't know. I don't know. Like I understand that David Culley is well-liked. Um, ah, it's going to be tough going to be tough nine uh, so the Broncos miss out on Trey Lance presumably they missed out well they missed out on Deshaun probably don't trade for Kirk Cousins either uh, so they roll with Drew Locke and they get a defensive piece uh, for Vic Fangio now this could be a spot where they do end up cutting Von Miller both for cap purposes as well as you know uh, other stuff uh, so Quiddy Pay coming on in replacing him on the edge a pay and chub it's not bad it's not bad. Ten. Uh, so as we've been saying on here a bunch, offensive line is a low key need uh, for the Cowboys, where they never really replace Fredericks. Uh, Zach Martin was dinged up last year, but he'll certainly be fine. Um, uh, uh, Collins was dinged up as well, plus Tyron Smith was injured. So they had injuries all over the place. Their death was exposed. So getting Slater in the building, play him at guard, and then eventually you potentially kick him out to left tackle if and when you get rid of Tyron Smith. There you go. Eleven. Danny Dimes needs a deep threat. So Jalen Waddle, that speed, Tyreek Hill 2.0 coming on in, taking the top off the defense, taking the eight, nine men out of the box. So Saquon can operate. It's a nice little get uh, for Big Blue. 12, Pan- uh, the Panthers, the, the Niners. So they don't get Kirk Cousins, presumably. But what the hell are they going to do a quarterback? They don't get Sean. I don't know. Maybe they draft Kyle Trask later. I don't know. But Kyle Pitts paired up with Kittle. With Ayak, with Debo, gross, 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 gross. Uh, hell, I could play quarterback. Or maybe if they they roll with Nick Mullins. I mean, uh, Shanahan does love him some Nick Mullins or CJ beat hard. So I don't know. Uh, Thirteen. So y- y- you bought the house. Now you gotta get the insurance. I mean, their left tackle play last year, Sam Tevy was atrocious. So Christian Darrisaw coming on in the pride of Virginia Tech didn't give up a sack last year. Phenomenal rogue raider in the run game. Great movement skills. I love him. I love him. I love him. Him protecting Justin Herbert's ass. Justin Herbert, who will finish number two in the offensive rookie of the year voting. Speak it into existence. 14. So woo. So the Vikings miss out on Darrisaw. They miss out on Quiddy Pay. They miss out on No Pants or Trey Lance. But Micah Parsons falls. Now, this is a realistic scenario for a couple factors. One, so off-ball linebackers generally aren't taken top 10, and that bias may still be held against Micah Parsons. Plus, the you know, the off-the-field stuff uh, about Micah Parsons being allegedly involved in some hazing incidents, you, you know, it's not great, uh, but certainly teams will do their homework. They will do their dil- due diligence, uh, and some teams may be like, uh, okay, that's whatever. It's what it's this. It's that. It's the other thing. Uh, some teams may take Parsons off their board altogether. But this will be an interesting situation because Eric Wilson probably going to leave in free agency unless they can re-sign him for cheap because the market is going to be very bare. The Vikings have to make a decision on Anthony Barr uh, in mid-March on third day of the new league year. Seven and a half million dollars of his twelve point three million dollar base salary becomes fully guaranteed. So it, it might be a spot where they cut Barr where they let Wilson walk and then linebacker is a major need head into the draft. And then Micah Parsons through a myriad of reasons is just there. And even though I I think that he would be best suited uh, as the middle linebacker spot, but him playing strong side linebacker, uh, he's got solid coverage skills. He's an absolute physical freak, a little bit raw and certainly needs some polish. That's a job for Adam Zimmer uh, and Mike Zimmer to work out, but using him as a pass rusher, using him uh, against the run. I mean, he, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Uh, 15 Patriots. <sighs> Mac Jones. That's right. So Mac Jones, quarterback, national title distributor for uh, the uh, Alabama Crimson Tide. Roll Tide. And of course, Saban and Belichick go way back like chiropractic. But, well, you know, um, you know, Mac Jones is pretty good. And blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, we're just going to get Mac Jones. Even Mac so Mac Jones, I don't know if this is a great spot for him. I Mac Jones going to a team with great weapons would be phenomenal right away. But the uh, the fact that the Patriots are pretty depleted in the receiving core, nah, nah. Uh, but maybe it'll work out long-term. 16. So Caleb Farley somehow, some way just falls down to the Cardinals. And, you know, it, it does have it, – it would be a weird spot where, where Sertan goes so high and then Farley just comes all the way down. Uh, and with the Cardinals – 
I mean, there's a lot of needs. Defensive line, edge rusher, offensive line. Uh, but with Patrick Peterson potentially out uh, as a free agent, getting his replacement does make sense here. 17. Barmore just seems like a Raiders pick, doesn't he? Uh, but putting him in the interior defensive line, getting that quick pressure uh, against Mahomes, getting that quick pressure against Herbert uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, 18. So the Dolphins uh, took Devontae Smith at three. Now circling back at number 18, uh, their actual pick, uh, Elijah Vera Tucker. Uh, just rebuild that offensive line uh, so that you can protect Tua, so you can get your best look at him and determine this season if he is going to be your quarterback of the future. Vera Tucker can play guard. Uh, they can uh, spot start him at tackle, etc. 19. So Washington misses out on Mac Jones, but whatever. And wide receiver at this spot, has been sort of a, a trendy selection and Bateman, uh, a former Minnesota Golden Go for going here at 19. I, I think Bateman as a possession receiver pairing up with the deep threat of Scary Terry, it's a nice little combo. Plus, you got Logan Thomas, the tight end, uh, former Virginia Tech quarterback, work in the middle. It's not bad. Plus, Antonio Gibson is a freak, man. Pride of Memphis. Let's go. 20. So Alex led the win the spot. Now, you could go uh, a couple of different directions. Tevin Jenkins uh, is still on board. And there are some really interesting tackle uh, selections in in, um, in uh, Chris's mock draft here. But uh, Sam Cosme is still there. But, yeah, uh, going with Leatherwood in this spot where he does have guard experience. You can kick him inside with James Daniels and Cody Whitehair uh, to start. And then eventually he uh, could potentially take over for Leno at left tackle. Yeah, sort of like uh, Alex Leatherwood be Conan, just taking over for Leno. And then Leno comes back. And then, I don't know, Leatherwood goes to TBS. But uh, 21. So... In the scenario where the Colts trade for Carson Wentz, but they don't give up 21, it's similar to the offer that they went after Matthew Stafford with, with uh, when they were interested in him, but they didn't want to give up their first-round pick. Maybe Howie Roseman would just be like, all right, fine, I'll take two, three, and, and a future three, or, or something like that. And this would make sense. So Kadarius Toney, whoo, wow, 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 wow. Him and Paris uh, and Pittman re replacing T.Y. Hilton. This is fun, man. This is a lot of fun. Like, not even Carson Wentz can screw this up. Oh, he probably can. Anyway, 22. Uh, so the Titans go edge, uh, of course. Uh, Gregory Rousseau as opposed to Aziz, which has been seen in every other single mock draft. So Rousseau at the spot, I, I don't mind it. So you can move him around uh, with Landry and Jeffrey Simmons uh, and get things going. You can play him on the edge. You can play him inside. Makes sense. 23. So since the Jets are going full young, going full gamble on potential, and that's been Joe Douglas's MO. That's why he went with Mekhi Becton at seven. That's why he went with Denzel Mims. That's why he went with Zach Wilson. Uh, Joe Douglas is not afraid to bet on potential. And Aziz Ujulari, a uh, redshirt uh, sophomore, and wow. like He is certainly raw, but Duke can get the edge. He can bend like no one's business. I absolutely love me some Aziz. Uh, so him and Jonathan Franklin Myers, nice little edge combination. Plus, of course, you got Quinn and Williams uh, working the inside. Let's go, J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Uh, 24, Tevin Jenkins uh, replacing uh, Villanueva at the left tackle spot. 25, woo. So Jackson Carmen, probably going to be a day two selection, but he goes 25 to the Jaguars. Pure connection, protected uh, Trevor Lawrence's blind side. Carmen coming on in. At the NFL level, he's probably a guard. Maybe he switches over to right tackle, but either way, uh, Trevor Lawrence gets some familiarity because Cam Robinson, probably not going to be there, probably going to leave him free agency, uh, as well as uh, Jawan Taylor. <sighs> yeah, about that one. Whiff. 26, Jalen Phillips replaces uh, Olivier Vernon. Uh, him, uh, Phillips, opposite of Miles Garrett. It's a nice little edge rushing combination. 27, so you could say edge rusher, you could say offensive line, uh, but certainly wide receiver Terrace Marshall Jr., uh, the pride of LSU. Uh, wide receiver three in the 2019 LSU national title team, by the way. Cool. Uh, but him uh, outside the numbers, big body guy. Miles Boykin as well as Hollywood. Um, uh, Hollywood just uh, Hollywood Brown just rolling all over the place. It's a nice little trio of receivers plus Andrews makes a quintet. Yeah, I mean, if, if Lamar Jackson can't improve his passing with this, I don't know. Uh, 28, yeah, yeah, the Saints take a linebacker. Zayvon Collins, absolute tackling machine. The Eric Kendricks clone in that Saints defense, that sucks. 29, so the Packers don't go wide receiver, which is interesting because Rondale Moore just sitting there chilling. He's like, please, I want to catch balls from Aaron Rodgers. But no, not so much. But Boogie Basham, uh, the pride of Wake Forest, uh, he, he come. 
Try again. He's coming in. Nailed it. Because uh, uh, Chris talks about that. They might have to cut Preston Smith uh, in terms of saving cap if they want to reward Aaron Rodgers, which uh, is an interesting angle and certainly could happen. I, I think they'll definitely hang on to Zadarius no matter what. They'll, they'll probably restructure him. But Preston, even though he's been decent uh, uh, of the two Smith brothers, but nah, nah. Uh, so Boogie comes in right away and just, damn, I hate it. I hate it. Uh, 30. Uh, Jeremiah Uwusu Koromora, joke coming out of Notre Dame, money backer, where the Bills, the Bills may see them being rivals to the Chiefs for the, the next for the foreseeable future, right? So if they want to get to the Super Bowl, it's going to have to go through Kansas City and you have to stop Travis Kelsey. So Jeremiah Uwusu Koromora is going to be the Travis Kelsey eraser. So wow. 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 Uh 31. Wyatt Davis, no matter what. Uh so the Buccaneers just hammer down hammer down again on offensive line so they hit on Werfs last year uh and now uh they're getting y davis who is probably gonna start the year on the pup but it's whatever and then eventually he's gonna start uh opposite of alex kappa the two uh at the two guard spots so getting it y davis no matter what and then finally 32 wheeler walker little jr where i think that walker's probably going to be a second round pick Maybe a third round pick, a day two selection, sure. But I mean, if the Chiefs want to get all up in here so that they don't have to rely on Mike Remmers and maybe they move on from Eric Fisher, I don't know. Uh, but he certainly has the potential. He's got the size, he's got the length, uh, and he would certainly do well protecting Patrick Mahomes. But he was injured in 2019. Uh, he was opted out in 2020. Really, his only his last good tape was in 2018. So it's a big gamble, but there you go. Uh, so dude's still on board. Kyle Trask, and given the run on quarterbacks, like maybe he goes, maybe. Uh, the two running backs didn't make it. Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, Rondale Moore, the wide receiver from Purdue, didn't get the call. Pat Fryermuth, tight end from Penn State, nope. Uh, and then offensive line, Sam Cosme, Jalen Mayfield, uh, Joseph Asai, Jason Owe, uh, Davion Nixon, Levi Muzuriki on the defensive line, didn't get uh, tagged either. Uh, Nick Bolton, Dylan Moses, linebackers. Now, could you say Bolton? Or Moses, maybe, to the Saints instead of Zayvon Collins. Nah, it still goes Zayvon Collins. Uh, cor- uh, defensive backs, J.C. Horn. Wow. J.C. Horn didn't make it. Tyson Campbell, no go. Asante Samuel Jr., no. Uh, and then no safety selected in the first round either. Javon Holland uh, and Trevin Morick, not so much. But, yeah, I think it might be a, a decision for the Vikings that they may have to have where – uh, you know, Micah Parsons potentially could fall for the myriad of reasons, uh, him being an off ball linebacker plus the off the field stuff. Uh, but the Vikings, you know, they made a commitment to drafting high character guys, building a locker room, and they would have to make a decision because he's an absolutely uber talented player. But, you know, is it going to be a deal breaker? Uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, but your thoughts, uh, CBS Sports' latest mock draft, let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. We'll support that work. Pull us on the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.